How's it going guys? If you remember a few months back, we started our CD09 transmission swap process and I made one video on it. We made tons of progress, uh, but I just haven't had things in place to go ahead and make the next video. And now we are finally at that point. So as you can see, I've got my engine over here on the hoist. Uh, we've got the transmission right here and we are ready to go ahead and mate these two up and finalize the design and modifications that we need to do to make this all work properly. So uh, everything that I've done since uh, last time you guys saw this was pretty much just finalize this shifter. Um, I don't think I showed it to you in that video, um, but basically we have the stock uh, Z32 shifter up here that I was using for my 30A um, and then it bolts into some of these points down here, up around here. Um, and then it just shifts like normal and it works really, really well. I am super happy with how this came out. It looks really, really cool. And it says the Z garage on it right there. So super happy. I was playing around with anodization too. So that's why it's a couple different colors. Uh, but if you guys are going to do the swap, if you're gonna attempt this, let me know. I'll go ahead and get some pieces for you. You know, I'm not gonna list this on my website because it's not like, I don't think there's gonna be a high demand for it. So I'm not gonna stock these pieces. But if you need them, just shoot me an email and I'll get you either the files or I'll get them sent to you. So um, other than that, we haven't done anything to the transmission since we saw it last. So let's go ahead and jump into where we are right now. And that is going to be, I just mounted this up to the uh, engine and we saw that we had some interference issues with the starter. We knew this was gonna be an issue, um, but basically this piece, let me see if I can step back in real quick. So this is what the bell housing originally looked like. Oh, can't do it. The bell housing originally had this piece right here. Um, see if I can get a better picture for you guys. All right, so this is what the original Z32 starter window kind of thing looks like, um, where the starter engages from the back forwards. Um, the Z31 starter engages from the front backwards. So we need to go ahead and modify this a little bit to make it fit. So when I bolted this up, you can see the starter mounts through this little hole right here. Um, there's actually a gusset plate, the kind of mud color covered uh, gold thing back there. Um, and that's where it mounts to from the engine side. And then typically on a Z31 engine or transmission, uh, it would have a very similar bolt pattern on the other side uh, to go ahead and brace it from the transmission. So when I put this up against here, uh, this bar right there uh, was right across the face right here. So obviously that needs to go. Um, but the second thing was that this upper hole did not line up with anything over here. Uh, but this lower hole for the starter actually interfered on this thread, oops, right there. So what I went ahead and did is just drew a line straight down past this uh, thread right here. And then I went ahead and cut just straight up and in. Um, and this is just gonna minimize the amount of work you have to do. Um, you could have made this, you know, flat so it doesn't look like that. But uh, I went ahead and just, you know, I was being lazy and just did the least amount of cutting that I could. So this is gonna go ahead and give us clearance for our starter to go ahead and mount. Um, but the only thing that I don't like about this is that now the only thing holding the starter in is this gusset plate, um, which is only going to be giving us support from the engine side. So when this starter engages, it's going to be pushing forward, um, which is meaning it's going to be pushing the whole starter piece forward, pushing this gusset plate forward. Normally you would have the bell housing to go ahead and help, you know, keep it from getting pushed forward. Uh, but we don't have that anymore. We cut all of our bracing away um, and we're not bolting to anything on this bell housing. So. I'm gonna go ahead and make a brace that goes from this bolt pattern right here um, and helps to brace the engine or the starter from this side of it. Um, it's not important, it's not necessary. Um, I mean, I think it's necessary, but it's not necessarily important to have. Um, but I think over time, what'll happen is the starter will probably bend this gusset plate backwards um, just through many starts and you know all the collisions that it has. So. I wanna go ahead and get in front of that and make sure that I always have reliable starting and make something that is going to go ahead and help with this. So I'm gonna go ahead, design something in sheet metal, have it bent up and sent to me. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and in the meantime, 3D print a cover um, that kind of goes right here so that it keeps dust out of the bell housing just cause I don't want dust in here. So this is looking pretty good. There's one more modification that we need to do to this and it is to cut a hole in the bell housing for our slave cylinder. So. Uh, we need to go ahead and put in the line. I can't show you guys right now because the uh, transmission is perched precariously, but I'll show you in the next shot. But basically we have like a hard line that goes to the outside of the bell housing right here with a bleed valve on it. Um, and we need to go ahead and cut a hole in the bell housing so that it can access our slave cylinder and so that we can go ahead and bleed the clutch effectively. So I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can line that up. I've got a hole saw. I'm gonna go ahead and cut a hole in here. 
Hopefully it lines up. Hopefully I don't have to make, you know, a couple cuts. Uh, but I'll go ahead and let you guys kind of see the final location so you can do it yourself if you are uh, going, to be ahead and going to go ahead and do the swap. So I'm going to go ahead and jump to that um, and then we'll see how it turns out. All right, guys, so I got the hard line portion of the clutch slave cylinder done. Uh, let me go ahead and kind of like this. So you can see on top here, it's actually very nearly dead center. Um, I drilled my hole a little bit to the right. Uh, if I drilled it right in the center, I think it would have been perfect. Um, I had to use a Dremel to cut out a lot more of this area here. Uh, you can see it's not really hole shaped over there. Uh, it is very hole shaped right there. So I used, uh, I think it's a two and a half inch drill. I mean, a one and a half inch. Um, it's a 32 millimeter drill, if you guys can see that. Um, this would have been a perfect size if I had put it right in the center. Um, obviously, you probably would have need to knock down one of those ribs just so that you could get it uh, centered. And then that would have worked really, really well. So uh, if you guys are going to do this, straight in the center should be perfect for you. You can see this is how it looks inside. Get up in here. There we go. And so the top line, you may notice, goes to a, a bleeder uh, port right here. And we want that on top, obviously. Um, so this is the orientation that's going to sit. Um, I'm not too worried about it being too high and like hitting, you know, the actual transmission tunnel or anything. So hopefully we don't have any issues with that, but I'm not too worried about it. Um, other than that, I put some uh, insulation just around this just to keep it from chafing up here. Um, it came with a bracket that bolted right here and it was really, it was a 90 degree angle. So obviously it wasn't going to go on here, but it would have been really nice. See if I can pick it up to flip it around and then bolt it on like that and then just flatten this out so I can tap it into a hole right there. Uh, but this bracket is so incredibly hard. I don't know what kind of steel this is, um, but I could not squish this in any way. I heated it up um, and you can see I only slightly got it past, you know, 90 degrees. Um, so if I do end up getting something, I'll probably end up making my own bracket. Uh, but it's got a little bit of wiggle in it. I think that's a good amount just so that you're not, uh, you know, right up against something and chafing the whole time. Um, but a bracket I think would be really nice. So that might be in the future, but it is not a necessity. Uh, this is looking really good. Um, I think we're going to go ahead and get to the clutch and transmission all back together because we need to put this in the car now so that we can go ahead and start mocking up the transmission cross member. Um, that is most likely going to be a custom piece as well. So fingers crossed we can go ahead and get that uh, done. So I think this episode is probably going to span a couple, like a week or so, um, probably a little bit more than a week as I get everything kind of sorted. So um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get this all together. You guys might not see this uh, process. Uh, because it's not really important to the CDO 9 video itself, um, but you guys will see all the transmission related stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and do some of this stuff and uh, I guess we'll pick up uh, when it's in the car. All right, guys, so I just got the transmission mounted back up and I wanted to kind of give you a rundown of where things are at. Um, so it looks like this is actually right next to the heat shield. Um, so we might end up uh, running into some issues here. I think uh, if you drilled it just a little bit further back, obviously um, it would push that a little bit further back, but you kind of need to go a decent amount backwards. Um, I don't know if we have the clearance for that, um, just in like the ribbing and everything there. So we might have to go end up and get a 90 degree fitting for that, um, just to make it fit properly. Um, but I don't see any issues at the moment. Um, cause we should be able to overcome that. There's, you know, fittings that we can use. So, uh, as, in terms of the starter, everything fits. Hopefully you guys can let me get some light over here. All right, so as you can see, we have plenty of clearance for this bottom bolt, this top bolt, and the actual starter itself. Everything is looking really good. Um, I don't know exactly how I'm going to go ahead and make this plate here, uh, just because these bolts are at really weird planes. Um, I'm not sure that I'll be able to get a piece of sheet metal that's bent to be that exact size. So um, I'm going to play around with that, um, see what I can do. Um, and of course, I'll let you guys know what the outcome is. Um, just something to note, this is a kind of a peculiar uh, orientation for those holes. So either way, guys, this is looking really good. I'm going to go ahead and separate these once again, uh, to get the engine in the car. But other than that, um, I think that this swap is, you know, coming along really well. So, um, let's go ahead and see what the next step is. All right, guys. Well, it has been a little bit and I am just getting the transmission in the car. Um, no issues with the transmission getting up in here. Obviously it's pretty heavy. So it was a little difficult getting it in. Um, but really everything bolts up just fine. Uh, it is, I think a taller transmission or at least, you know, it's taller in the top. So it has to sit a little bit lower. Um, I don't know if you guys can see if I can get you back here. 
uh, that bracket that I made for the shifter is really close to the top. Um, so I went ahead and pushed it all the way up so it was touching uh, and then lowered it about half an inch um, just because we wanted to make sure that was good, um, nothing was going to hit. And then uh, I went over to work on the bracket uh, for the mounting and I realized that the bolt pattern right here for this bushing uh, actually matches up with the spread of the original Z31 bushing. Uh, if you remember, um, this is the aluminum bracket that I made a while ago. Um, and I had one laying around because I saved it for myself as I was like, oh, I might use this at some point. Um, and I put it on here and it actually fits. Um, just throwing that original cross member bracket back on. So um, this is what I'm doing for mounting. Obviously this um, bracket here is not uh, easily available. Uh, if you really need one, go ahead and let me know. Um, people have been asking for them, but I really need to buy a bunch of these to make it cheap enough to make it worth it. So uh, if you guys really want one, definitely let me know. Otherwise, uh, <laughs> it's just gonna be something that uh, you might have to figure out on your own as well. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and bolt this up here, get it going, um, get it connected to the car, and that should really commence our CDO9 swap. Um, I, or not commence, but uh, finish it. So uh, I went ahead and measured for the drive shaft, um, sent a message out to shaft masters, so waiting on them to get that going. Um, for a two plus two with the CDO9, I measured 43.25 inches um, in shaft length. Um, I think that's gonna be different uh, for just coupes versus two plus twos. I think all two plus twos should be the same. Um, I don't see why they'd be any different. So uh, if you happen to have a two plus two, that's gonna be the shaft that you need. You could order that ahead of hand, ahead of time if you want, or just wait and then you know measure it up like me. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and get this mounted and then I think we'll be done. So uh, I'll let you guys know how it turns out. All right guys, it has been a few weeks and we have the rear drive shaft in. Everything is looking really good. Everything bolted up just fine. I think I've mentioned it before but this is a Shaft Masters aluminum, three inch aluminum drive shaft. Um, and they have the rear yoke or the rear differential flange and the front yoke um, for pretty much anything that you need. So um, this isn't sponsored. I just, this is the second one that I've got from them and it's always perfect. So I really appreciate that. So um, I think this is gonna be it for the CD09 swap videos. Um, I will make a first drive video when we get this going so you can kind of see how it's driving. Um, but that is pretty much it guys. If you have any questions or comments about this swap, definitely drop them down below. Um, I'll do my best to answer them. Of course, you know, I'm pioneering this, so it's not like I have all the answers. Um, but it's looking really, really good. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.